Hi families, my name is Andy Plemons and I am the librarian at Barrow Elementary. This page that I've created for you has some resources on it to help you as you navigate using technology as a family. Um, technology, as you know, is always changing. There are always new things that kids are discovering to use. And as soon as you feel like you have a plan in place for your family of monitoring screen time and what your kids are doing, something changes or kids find a way around what you set in place. Um, so just know that it is an ongoing process when you are navigating this as a family. Um, and there's no one right way to do things because as we know, every family is different and expectations are different in each family. Um, so just think about what's best for your family uh, and not worry about what other families have decided, although it can be helpful sometimes to hear what other people are doing. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom of the page to start uh, to point out two resources that I think are really helpful in starting this process. One is Common Sense Media. Um, Common Sense Media um, has a wealth of information on it for both families and teachers. There's curriculum here about teaching digi digital citizenship. Uh, but in the parenting side of things, what I like is that you can sort topics by different age groups. You can look at specific things that you're concerned about, whether it's screen time or social media or cell phone, any of those things, you can click on that topic and see some articles or resources for that. If there's a specific tool that your kids are wanting to use, you can take a look here and see what Common Sense Media says about it, things to be concerned about or to watch for. Um, you know, sometimes your kids want to use a tool that you've never heard of before or it's new and this is a good place to come and learn about some of those things and what some of the age limits might be. Um, and some of the concerns that you might watch out for. So this is a great starting place to go to Common Sense Media. Um, another tool that I think is helpful is Google's Internet Awesome. Um, it has stuff, again, for families and educators as well as kids. So on the family side of things, it just goes through kind of some key ideas um, about working on the Internet, um, how to share what to share, what not to share, looking for fake information, making sure that you're keeping things um, secure, strong passwords, being kind, um, and being brave to speak up when something happens online that makes you uncomfortable or you see something that you maybe aren't supposed to be on. Um, so it just gives some good talking points and uh, kind of little phrases for kids to remember when they're looking at um, things online. Well, another tool that I like on this site is called Innerland, and it's a game that goes along with these concepts where kids can play games and learn about different ways of being safe um, online. So take a look at that and see if any of those resources are helpful to you as a family as well. Then, um, as we think about um, just you know, those tools kind of help you be knowledgeable about various things online. Um, but some families like to get uh, very specific with a plan, technology plan, and sit down and talk as a family about expectations, um, about amounts of time to be on devices or what to be on. Um, communication is key and modeling is key. Whatever you talk about with your kids, um, is something you should think about your own um, technology activity and how much you're on a device as well. Um, because kids, if kids see an adult online all the time, then they think that that's what they should do as well. So it's something we all have to be aware of. And I know I'm not always the best at it myself. <laughs> um, but on this middle section of the Wakelet, there are a couple of tools that you might look at. One is just a family tech planner. And this, again, will break it down into age ranges to think about what's most appropriate for those ages. Um, and the planner will just um, give you kind of some starting points of things to think about 
But then as far as expectations, it has stuff recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Um, you can you know, add in here kids' names, how much time. So really you're setting up kind of a conversation with your child, but also this could serve as a form of a contract um, of sorts if you want to go that route. And speaking of contracts, there is um, another one on Common Sense Media, which is more of an agreement, a family agreement, where you go through and it has some things already there. You can add your own. You, of course, could just use this as a model for you to type up something yourself. Um, and then at the bottom, there's a place for everyone to sign. And then this could be brought out and reviewed and said, well, we all agreed, we signed it. You, know, you can make some modifications as you go if needed. Uh, but sometimes it helps to have it formally written down so you can go back and say, yeah, we did talk about this and you signed it right here. <laughs> um, then as you think about, um, you know, once kids are on devices, you know, some some people like to use tools to monitor what kids are doing online and some have more trust in their kids. It just depends on your child, your family, and what you feel comfortable with. But I did put some resources on here of things to think about when you're monitoring your child's activity. It's not just about getting an app to monitor for you because there really is not a one-size-fits-all monitoring software. Um, especially when your kids are on multiple devices. Um, sometimes these apps work with one particular device, but not on another one. Um, a lot of times stuff with iOS, like an iPhone, uh, doesn't work very well with all the monitoring tools because you know Apple has uh, rules that they don't want other apps controlling their device. So, um, you know, it's you really have to kind of use multiple pieces of a puzzle to see what your child is doing online. But this article at the top kind of goes through and just gives you some things to think about as far as monitoring. Of course, there's the software, but just thinking about other things too, as far as communicating, thinking about web filtering, um, just knowing what your kids have, using family sharing. Um, if you have that set up in your iPhone or cell phone plan, um, having rules about social media if your child is on there, although social media really is for most of the time ages 13 and up. Um, but we, of course, do have kids with social media at the elementary age, even though that's against the terms of use. Um, but these are just several things to think about. And then you can get into the different kinds of app apps that are out there. Of course, people always want to look for something that's free, but usually free is very limited. This um, article kind of goes through and gives you several different options that have free versions for monitoring your child. But of course, they also have premium versions that you have to pay for. And that usually is the case if you want a good, strong monitoring software. Although I've tried some of the paid ones for my own kids and really haven't found one that I love. Um, so I think you can pair this with some of the other ways of monitoring what your kid, your child is doing. Um, one thing I did want to point out is that you might think about your particular router that you use at home. Sometimes a router will have a, a way to see all of the devices that are connected to it and you can turn the internet on and off for a device at a certain time and that can just help with the screen time aspect but not necessarily what kids are getting on. Um, I also linked a um, Apple's parental controls. If your child has an iPhone, this is a way that you can go through and set up screen time and what they have access to, what they don't have access to, how long they can be on various apps that are on the phone. Um, so just know that this is a starting place. It, there's not a one size fits all, as I said. Um, I think just thinking about your family and what you need is the best thing to do getting ideas from other families and what they're doing but just because one family is doing something doesn't mean that you have to do that exact same thing um, just tailor a plan that fits uh, you 
and know that we're all in this together. We're all navigating, trying to figure out all of these new things as they come out and we do the best that we can and it's not always going to be perfect. You do make a slip up and then you learn from that and figure out where to go next. But you just put the best plan you can into place and then modify as you go. So I hope these tools are useful and this uh, helps you think about this as a family. And I'm happy to chat with you if you have other questions or concerns or want to talk through something.